guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be taking you through all of the books that I finished this month. So this is my September wrap up. I hate when I finish a month and I didn't finish all of the books that I was in the middle of. So there are several books that I was reading all month that I still haven't finished. So I'm not going to include them in this video. I'm not going to talk about them even though I feel like I should because I've been reading them all month but I will save them for the month that I actually finish them. So as for the books that I actually completed, I have six to talk about today. So let's just get straight into it. So the first book that I have to talk about is Utopia by Sir Thomas More. I had to read this for one of my classes, which is like a utopian fiction literature kind of class. And so basically, okay, I have a couple of books that I have to talk about from this class and it's hard to talk about them individually. I think every single one of them I gave three stars on their own and it's just because by themselves it's like yeah it's a pretty standard like utopian book like nowadays we have so many of them so it's not as shocking as I'm sure it was during its time but what I have found to be like really enjoyable and interesting about all of these books is comparing them and like seeing the differences and the similarities between the different utopian fictions coming from different time periods so by itself I gave utopia a three out of five stars what's cool is this can't even call it a book because it's not technically a novel but this man who wrote this actually coined the term utopia so this book is where that term comes from which I think is pretty cool. This entire book is basically just a conversation between a couple of characters about this perfect society explaining how it works. So it does have a lot of interesting ideas in it but as far as like a book it's lacking all of the things that we would consider nowadays of like things that make a book a book. So like it was okay it was really short and easy to get through but it's definitely not something I'm gonna reread, it's definitely not a favorite. But just for like the history of it and knowing that this is where like that whole genre started, I think it's worth reading just to kind of get like that background. Okay, moving on. The second book I'm going to talk about, I also read for class, but it's actually like a novel. It's called Specimen Days by Michael Cunningham. Apparently this won a ton of literary awards. So it's basically separated into three different parts. It's like three interconnected novellas and it was actually really interesting. At first I hated it. I hated the first novella so much. I didn't understand. I thought it was really poorly written and it just like irritated me. I was like why is this like so highly regarded? This is terrible. And then you read the second novella and you're like oh. And then you read the third novella and you're like oh. It's so smart. Just like the little ways they're all connected and how they all go together. I like don't even want to explain it to you because I don't want to ruin this for you. It's something you have to read for yourself. But basically it's not like the same characters like carry over into the novellas. It's like reincarnations of the characters in like different time periods kind of and like the essence of them and also there's like parallels in historic events and like the things that happens and especially the themes in it and it's just very very interesting. The first one's set in the past and this guy's working in like a factory and it's all about like you know industrialization and the machines and stuff and then the second one is like these first responders and child terrorism in like present day and then the third one is this like weird futuristic world with like immigrated lizard alien people and stuff it's like the weirdest combination of stories but they fit together so well i would just recommend reading this if you're looking for something completely different because i promise you you've never read anything like this and i'm actually really glad that i read this in a class as opposed to on my own because like having those discussions and like analyzing the connections between the stories has actually been really really interesting i don't remember what i gave this maybe a three out of five stars maybe a four out of five stars it's definitely not my favorite like entertainment wise but like as something that was like really thought-provoking it was pretty cool so the next one that I have to talk about is The Tempest by William Shakespeare I also read this in my utopian fiction class which seems kind of odd like how is The Tempest a utopian fiction tbh I'm not entirely sure I guess it's like a utopian for some of the characters in the play I talked about this I think in my tbr for this month I'm not like a huge Shakespeare person I don't hate Shakespeare but I don't love it and I still kind of have that feeling coming out of this play I think I gave it a three out five stars I think that's what I've given every Shakespeare play I've ever read like it's interesting to read and I can like acknowledge the importance of it and like how cool it is that this is stuck around as like a staple in our culture and like people have to read these in high school and stuff but again it was kind of okay it's definitely not my favorite it's definitely I, I felt like it was like more simple than some of his other plays if that makes sense I don't know to be honest I don't have a whole lot to say about this one it was just kind of like meh for me I'm not like it, passionate about it either way but I've heard some people say that this is their favorite Shakespeare play so if that's the case for you would you like explain 
explain like why I'm like genuinely curious because for me I was just like really underwhelmed so I want to know like what about it like stuck out to people and like made people love it because I don't really know why I didn't love it I just didn't love it but the next book I have to talk about I absolutely loved I adored this book it's the spirit catches you and you fall down by Anne Fademan this is actually non-fiction it's an the word it's like ethnography so basically this researcher like went and observed this culture and wrote about it there's this Hmong family who's immigrated to America and the Hmong are these people who are originally from like Laos and they've kind of never had a country of their own they've been like moved around because they refuse to assimilate to any other culture like they're very very proud of their culture so China like wanted to assimilate them and they were like nah peace and like just kept like moving around and so there's this family in America and like I said like a big part of their culture is they do not want to assimilate to American culture and so their daughter Leah has like really really bad epilepsy and they have to keep taking her to the hospital and they're completely illiterate and they don't speak English at all and so there's this huge language barrier between them and the doctors and they like can't administer her medicine properly they don't really understand what's going on they don't really understand what the doctors want her to do and then there's also this cultural barrier where they don't believe in all of this medicine and so it's just kind of an account of this family's experience with all of Leah's doctors because this condition follows her throughout her life and they have to take her to the hospital like regularly and they still have the same problem every single time and the hospital like doesn't have translators and it's just like a really insightful thought-provoking read on like different cultures and like ethnocentrism and I just really really enjoyed it it switches off like back and forth like one chapter is about like what's actually happening with Leah and the doctors and stuff and then I'll have a chapter on like the history of the Hmong and everything so I would 100% recommend this to you if it sounds even remotely interesting I absolutely loved it I gave it like a four or a five out of five stars I can't really remember but it was really fantastic and especially as a non-fiction it read like a novel like it was super easy to read it was super easy to digest I flew through it 10 out of 10 would recommend this one the next book I have to talk about is Catwoman by Sarah J Maas apparently this isn't the actual cover for it it's like a special edition or something and the pages are purple so I'm very happy I have this edition because I like this a lot more than the other cover I've seen but yeah so this is one of the DC icon books this is actually the only one that I've read it's probably going to be the only one that I do read I'm not super into comic books or superheroes or anything like that it's just not really something I enjoy reading about but this one seemed kind of cool and I've liked Sarah J Mass's previous book so I decided to give it a try and it was okay I think I gave it a three and a half, maybe a 3.75 out of five stars. Like it was enjoyable. It was really easy to read. I flew through it and it read very similarly to Sarah J Mass's other books, but it's not gonna be like one of my favorites. It wasn't anything that like wowed me. And I wish I could put my finger on why it didn't. There's nothing particularly wrong with this. Like you could point out and be like, this is why I didn't love it. It's just like, I read it okay moving on like it was fine like I said it read very similarly to Sarah J Mass's other books and maybe that's why I was underwhelmed it's just like I felt like I had already read this story like a lot and I'm sure if you're a fan of like the comic books and you like that kind of thing you're gonna like the like little nods to the comic books and there's like other characters and stuff in here that you're gonna recognize so I think you'll enjoy it more for those reasons but since that's something that I don't really get excited about it was just kind of like another part of the book so it was definitely fun though like just for like a mindless entertaining girl power romp through Gotham City like it was very fun and then the last book that I have to talk about that I actually finished is Looking Backward by Edward Bellamy this is another utopian novel this one I think was my favorite of the three that I finished this month we're reading another one right now so this one is set in Boston 2000 it was written in like the 1880s or something like that and so it follows this character who basically like falls asleep for a hundred years and then like wakes up and his entire society has changed I think the reason why I've enjoyed this one so much is having those other two under my belt already we've been like making comparisons about like how this society differs from the other ones and like the different ideas that this author had about like what a perfect society would be this one definitely reminds me more of like 1984 my professor even though she's in like the English department she also talks a lot about like women's studies and like feminism and stuff so it's been interesting kind of like from that lens because you can tell she kind of leans towards that and her teaching of these books to kind of watch the evolution of like feminism throughout these books because it's like non-existent in those previous ones and you like kind of start to see seeds of it in this book and then the one we're reading right now is just like pure feminism 
So that's just kind of interesting. If you're interested in that, I would recommend like reading this string of books and like watching the idea develop. That's been kind of interesting to follow. On its own, this one was okay. I think I gave it a three out of five stars. I feel like that's like my standard for books that you're required to read in class. I generally give them a three out of five stars unless I hated it. And I don't really know if that has anything to do with the actual book that we read or just the fact that if you're requiring me to read something, I'm probably not going to like it as much as I would if I read it on my own. But yeah, those are all of the books that I've read this month. Let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these and what you thought of them. I would love to hear your thoughts or tell me what your favorite book that you read in September was. Clearly the majority of the books that I read this month were for class. I feel like that always happens the first month of the semester. I'm still like getting into a routine and I'm just like trying to stay caught up with my readings and stuff. So I'm hoping this semester to like actually do more for fun books. But luckily I actually liked the ones that we read for class. That doesn't always happen, but this was a pretty decent month for required reading. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you were having a fabulous day. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, all of those links are down below in the description, as well as links to my book. If you didn't know, I published a book earlier this year. You can pick up a copy if you would like. I would love you a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> and I will just see you guys in my next video very, very soon. Bye.